Hello listeners, my name is Mr. Vishwesh Sadanam Fatrekar, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Ganpat Parsikar, College of Education. The course title is Indian Knowledge System, Vedic Education System. In this particular course, I am going to deal with the model History of Vedic Education System. So, in this particular model of History of Vedic Education System, we are going to see first the introduction to Vedic education, secondly, origins of Vedic education, thirdly, division of Vedic period, objectives of Vedic education, structure and organization of education, overview of Vedic education system. So, Vedic education system is an integral part of Indian culture for centuries, embodying the essence of traditional wisdom and knowledge. It is rooted in ancient Indian civilization and is closely associated with the Vedic texts, which are a collection of religious and philosophical texts composed in Sanskrit between 1500 and 500 BC. The term Vedic refers to the Vedas, the oldest sacred scripture of Hinduism. The Vedic education system is rooted in ancient Indian civilization and is closely associated with the Vedic texts, which are a collection of religious and philosophical hymns composed in Sanskrit between 1500 to 500 BC. The term Vedic refers to the Vedas, the oldest sacred scripture of Hinduism. The education system during the Vedic period was primarily oral with an emphasis on transmitting knowledge through recitation and memorization. Let us trace the origins of Vedic education. The ancient Indian system of education is pervaded with the desire for bringing about salvation and final beatitude along with the full physical development of individual in the same manner as the philosophy of life. The Indian system of education caters to both physical and spiritual solitariness. The Vedas, the oldest scripture of Hinduism, forms the foundation of Vedic education. Students, known as Brahmacharis, would study under the guidance of a guru, imbibing teachings on philosophy, rituals, and spirituality. The division of Vedic period. So, as you can see here, there are two distinct divisions we can make based on the time frame. One is early Vedic period which has started from 1500 to 1200 BC and then the next division is later Vedic period from 1100 to 500 BC. So during early Vedic period the idea of entrepreneurial reality of life and the world, the concept of ultimate death fertility of mundane pleasures had provided them with a special angle of vision. The entire educational tradition originated in this principle. Thus, the Indian sages devoted themselves to the study of suprasensible world and spiritual powers and molded their life accordingly. The ultimate aim of education emerged as Chitti Vritti Nirodha, the control of mental activities connected with the so-called concrete world. However, education did not neglect the development of pupil's power for his all-sided advancement. The system of education which evolved in the Rig Veda concerned itself with the acquisition of the supreme knowledge, religion and Brahma. The aim of the Veda was the knowledge of the ultimate truth and the realization of the supreme. Education during the later Vedic period, that is from 1100 to 500 BC, in that particular Vedic period, the educational sphere was inordinately dominated by priesthood, hence knowledge pertaining to sacrifice rituals had considerable advance. There were scholars and thinkers who had developed an attitude characterized by mysticism towards life and mediated on speculative subjects such as God, soul, universe, life and that. The spread and propagation of the post-Vedic education was influenced through diverse institutes known as Sakhas, Charnas, Parishas, Kulas and Gutras, an improvement on the oral tradition of the Vedic literature. As we can see here, the Vedas can be classified into following types, the Rig Veda, 
the book of mantras, the Samaveda, the book of song melodies, the Yajur Veda, the book of ritual, the Atharva Veda, the book of speed. So whole education system was revolving during the Vedic period around this particular study of Vedas. Ultimate objective was moksha or self-realization. Ancient Indians believed that education should prepare an individual in such a way as to prepare him to attain the objective of liberation, that is, to be one with the Almighty and to be free from the cycle of birth and death. Similarly, other objective was infusion of pity and religiousness and together development of all-round personality of a individual. The structure and organization of education. So here, through the history, we can trace that there are two different types of education, primary education and higher education. So primary education starts at the age of five years of the child and it was mostly organized in the family. Ritual is performed called as Vidya Prarambha Samskar, that is the commencement of education. Then higher education was mostly organized in the Gurukul schools and the admission age for Brahmin children was 8 years, Kshatriyas 10 years, Vaishyas 12 years and Shudras were deprived of education. A special ritual which was performed at the time of admission to the higher education called as Upanayan Samskar that is commencement of higher education. Here we can get to know the overview of the Vedic education system. Firstly, the oral tradition which prevails from 1500 till 500 BC. The Vedic education system was primarily oral in nature. Students known as Shishyas would learn from Gurus through a process of oral transmission. The Vedas were memorized and recited and this oral tradition was considered the most effective means of preserving the sacred knowledge. Oral method of teaching stress on Shravana that is listening, Manana that is learning and Nidhyasana that is practice. Next is Gurukul system. Education during the Vedic period was often imparted in Gurukulas which were residential schooling system. Students lived with their Gurus in an ashram and received education in various subjects including the Vedas, philosophy, astronomy, music and ethics. The relationship between the Guru and Shisha was highly revered with the Guru playing a central role in shaping the character and intellect of the student. This holistic approach emphasized not only academic learning but also moral values and disciplines. Thirdly, the scriptural studies, Vedangas and Upavedas. In addition to the Vedas, there were subsidiary texts known as Vedangas and Upavedas which were also learned. Vedangas were auxiliary signs that supported the understanding and interpretation of Vedas. They include subjects like phonetics, grammar, astronomy, ritual and prosody. The Upavedas dealt with practical knowledge and included fields like Ayurveda, Dhanurveda, Gandharva Veda and Stapatya Veda. The focus was on understanding the cosmic order and the interconnectedness of all the life. Yajnas and Rituals The Vedic education system emphasized the performance of Yajnas rituals as a means of spiritual and moral development. Students were expected to learn the intricate rituals and their underlying philosophical significance. The study of Vedas was considered a sacred duty and education was closely linked to religious and ethical values. Next is focus on Dharma. The Vedic education system aimed at imparting not only intellectual knowledge but also a strong foundation in dharma. The emphasis was on leading a life in accordance with the moral and ethical principles as prescribed in the Vedic text. The student life was called as Brahmacharya, the first stage of life and it was dedicated to education. During this phase, students lived in Gurukulas and underwent rigorous training. They were expected to observe celibacy and focus on learning and discipline. The curriculum during Vedic period, the primary focus of education during this period was on Vedas which were divided into four categories. Apart from the Vedas, other subjects like philosophy, astronomy, mathematics, politics and arts were also taught. The aim of education was not only intellectual development but also spiritual and moral growth. 
the role of guru, the guru was a highly revered figure in the Vedic education system. The relationship between the guru and shishya was considered sacred and the guru played a crucial role in shaping the character and values of the student. Let us now see about post-Vedic period. Over the time, the Vedic education system evolved and new school of thought emerged such as Upanishads, which delve into more philosophical and speculative aspects of knowledge. The later periods saw the development of systems like Vedanta, Nyaya, Mimasa, and which contributed to the diversification of educational thought in ancient India. There was a well-planned system of education in later Vedic period. The student was initiated by the ceremony of one Upanayana. Students enter a new life, which is described as a second birth. In the life of Brahmachari, the student leads a life of simple living and high thinking. Life is regulated. The aim of learning are faith, retention of knowledge, progressing, wealth, longevity, and immortality. The essence of the education system was that the student had to take up residence in the home of his teacher. His main duties were to beg for his teacher, to look after the sacred file, files, and tend the house and his cattle. Daytime sleeping was forbidden. The teacher then initiates him into the various aspects of knowledge. The student, as a rule, studied with his preceptor for 12 years. There were also associations for advanced study and research. One such association was Panchal Parishad. Kings also organized a conference where philosophers participated in discussion. The ultimate aim of education in later Vedic period was the attainment of highest knowledge, the knowledge of Brahman or Atman as the supreme reality. Other than the domestic schools, there were specialized agencies to impart fruitful education. There were the wandering schools, charkas, who spread education in the country. Women participated in these conferences. Women even addressed a congress of philosophers. In the Rig Veda, women also has composed hymns. The Kshatriya caste had encouraged learning. Education in the later Vedic period was strategically limited to the main three upper castes. The Guru Shishya tradition, as one of the most sacred traditions of India, was ex accepted in the sphere of education in later Vedic period. The subject of study during that time included the four Vedas grammar, mathematics, neurology, logic, ethics, Brahma Vidya, biology, military science, astronomy and medicine. Dhanu Vidya or War Tactics was also part of education in later Vedic period. Education was aimed at the knowledge of the Atman, that is soul or the absolute of self-realization. To conclude, we can say that the Vedic education system laid the groundwork for the rich intellectual and cultural heritage of India, influencing subsequent educational traditions and shaping the spiritual, philosophical and ethical values of the society. The evolution of Vedic education unveils a timeless legacy that transcends epochs, embodying the essence of wisdom, spirituality and cultural heritage. Its enduring influence continues to shape the fabric of society. The Vedic education system laid the foundation for the intellectual and spiritual traditions of ancient India, while the specific practice and emphasis on certain subjects evolved over time. The fundamental principles of guru shishya relationship, holistic education, and the pursuit of knowledge for both material and spiritual well being continue to influence the educational landscape for centuries to come.